Hi, in this quick video tutorial, I will show you in um, Excel using the analytic solver how to run k means clustering. So let's take an example. Let's say you are given this demographic data about your customers. You have information about them, let's say about 30 customers. Um, and you know what their age is, their gender, how much money they make, whether they're married or not, uh, whether they have children, you know, whether they have a car loan, this is a car loan and mortgage. Yeah. And you want to find out if there are logically connected groups of customers, meaning there are clusters of customers that are similar. Because, you know, a question you might have is, Maybe there are certain high earning customers who have a lot of income and maybe there is a group of customers who make less money. And so you may want to find out if there's indeed uh, two different groups of customers or maybe you want to find out if there are more than two or three groups of customers. People making less money and young, people making more money and older or people making, you know, uh, more money and younger and so on and so forth. So you might have things that you might be interested in to know about what does your data tell you about the types of clusters or logical groups that your customers are in because if you know what groups they are in then you could have a targeted effort for that group because imagine customers who are young and making a lot more money will have a different requirement for your products than maybe those who are making a lot of money but are old, yeah? So you would want to find out when you're given this data what type of logical groups there are. So this is how we can go about doing it, yeah? So the first step is you would want to have Excel with your analytic solver. You will see um, the data science package. That's where you would actually go, the front line add in comes up with comes with the analytics solver and data science uh, tabs um, we've seen the monte carlo simulation uh, and we've seen the optimization algorithms in the analytics solver for clustering we would want to go to the data science tab once you go to the data science tab you would see cluster and uh, there are two types of clustering that this package provides we're going to look at k means clustering yeah uh, so this algorithm is very helpful and efficient because if you want to really put things in clusters and uh, in a logical way, brute force is super, super expensive. And so uh, a fast mechanism like the k-means algorithm actually helps you do that. So assuming you know what k-means algorithm is, um, then you can actually run it. In a sense, k-means algorithm requires you as the user of this algorithm to define k. k stands for number of clusters. And so it requires you as a user to know, okay, hey, I want to cluster using three clusters, k is equal to three. Two clusters, k is equal to two. Yeah? And it also requires you as the user to understand what data you are actually having, what type of variables you have. Certain data set uh, might have a combination of quantitative and categorical variables. For example, here, we're gonna, let's say, look at age, which is a quantitative and an income, which quantitative variable. But there are also other categorical variables, uh, married, not married, children, how many, loan, yes or no, mortgage, yes or no, and so on and so forth, yeah? So as you imagine, when I click clusters and k-means, it automatically gave me this dialog. And there are three tabs, data tab, parameters tab, and scoring tab. And look, the, the software, the frontline system software is smart. It already knows that you're in the data sheet. Uh, and that, uh, so if I scroll up a little, you will see what I mean. Uh, you will see that uh, this, this is indeed the data sheet. So let me let me give it a minute to refresh. So if you see here, if I scroll up a little bit, you will see that I'm indeed in the data sheet. Yeah. So it knows that I'm in the data sheet, and uh, so it, it knows that this is the worksheet you're in. 
it also knows that this is the data range. So this is, you know, starting from A1 to G31. So it picked it up primarily because my cursor, my, my cell that I was selected in was with this continuous block of text of data. And so it knew how to pick it up. So now let's just see if you didn't uh, have that cursor here, but maybe I had my cursor here. And if I, let's say, try to select k-means, look what it did. It actually didn't detect that there's this whole table of information. It just went to where my cluster is, N8, yeah? So it's super important for you to either recognize that the data that it's selecting is accurate, uh, and the easiest way is to, you know, either have your have your um, cursor in the table of continuous table that you want, or you may want to actually select the data that you're interested in. Let's say I'm interested in these 30 rows, and then you could do clustering, k-means clustering. So it automatically then realizes, oh, that's the data, and it, it does a lot of this uh, variables based on the first row assuming that to be the headers yeah so it's going to ignore that as the data observation but use that as the headers yeah variable names so let's imagine we want to use just these two quantitative variables age and income to do clustering so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the variables that i'm interested in move it into the selected variables uh, section and uh and that tells my algorithm, so look, it's also, should also double check all of these things that it automatically selected, that it's accurate. So it says there are 30 um, data points uh, here. Uh, and given k-means is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm, um, we don't have to cover training, validation, and test right now. We'll cover it in the upcoming algorithms because there's no target here that says, hey, look, this is the source of truth. It actually, uh, there's no right answer here. It's, it's actually going to tell you based on the data what insight it gets, yeah? So you hit next, and then it moves from the data tab to the parameters tab, yeah? And typically, you, you could imagine that age is in number of years, uh, and it's a much lower magnitude compared to income, yeah? So income is a much higher number. This is less than 100 for most of them, all of them, and this is in thousands. So you don't want income to overpower age because uh, that can very much happen because it's a much larger magnitude. So what you do is you typically say, hey, I want to standardize my data. And so you go to part parameters. Within parameters, you go to rescale and say rescale my data. Click that checkbox and make sure standardization is selected. So what will happen here is that income field that I selected and age field that I selected would be standardized. So you will have Z values that will be calculated based on average values of income, standard deviation of income, and every data point in each of these rows would be converted into standard values. Yeah. So you select that, so you don't have to do all of that manually. You can just tell it, standardize my data before you do the clustering. So you hit done. And as I said, you would need to know as a user of this algorithm how many clusters you want. Nothing stops you from trying out two clusters, three clusters, four clusters, and so on, and actually see what kind of output you get. And let's say if you're given you need three clusters, you specify the number of clusters here. Iterations is how many times it's going to create the um, assignment to the center and then re-update, yeah? So every time you move the assignment, and move the center, then that's one iteration. So I'm saying, hey, do this for 10 iterations. And uh, we would all want to use the same random seed, one, two, three, four, five, because as you, as you understand the k-means algorithm, it starts off with random uh, points in the dimensions. And so if we use the same random seed, then we all have the same random number generator that's gonna be used for identifying where the algorithm starts. And that's important because if we use the same random seed, then all of us will get the same answer, yeah? So then we can actually check whether we're doing it correctly or not. So it's super important for us to use the same random seed, especially if the instruction tells you use the random seed, it aligns all of our random number generators. It makes grading super easy for all of the student graders uh, because, you know, it's everyone gets the same answer, right? If, 
So make sure if you're told to use the same random number generator with this seed that you use that, yeah. And uh, as we've covered in the k-means algorithm, the random points at which it starts has a huge impact. So we would want to start randomly at, you know, many different locations. Let's say I'm going to say start at 10 different random uh, starts and then do the algorithm again and then check the value of whether which random starts actually the best. Yes, yeah? so I'm going to say start and do this algorithm 10 times with 10 different random locations. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to ask it to display everything. I'm really interested in the cluster summary. I want to look at which of these elements uh, observations are assigned to which clusters. I'm going to click all of these output. Um, hit next. It's going to go to the scoring. Look, validation is and testing is unselectable with this unsupervised machine learning algorithm. And you say, hey, just keep this training checked for now. And you hit finish. That's it. So you do that and it actually gives you the output. Yeah, this is super, super interesting. Uh, the way it does this, and I'm going to re, re um, size my screen a little so that you can actually see it. So you see it now created these outputs, KMC output, which is K means clustering output. Initially, I only had this data tab and then it created training cluster sheet. It created the KMC stored. Uh, you can ignore this one. It's basically a way in which in XML it tries to communicate uh, and uh, encode what it's trying to do. But these two are the most important one, KMC output and KMC training clusters. And if you want to navigate to each of these output tables, you can also click through this and then get to it very quickly. But in a sense, KMC output tells you, hey, these are the inputs you specified. You're interested in age and income, so you can validate it. You can validate the number of records that it looked at. And it says, oh, you wanted to standardize. So that's great. I went to double check. It's using the same random seed, number of starts. So all of the input parameters are here so that you can just make sure everything looks good. Having done that, it now gives you the cluster centers. Yeah, it gives you the best that it could find out of all of these random starts. It tells you that this is the best centers that I could find for age and income this cluster one this is the center yeah and remember this this measure standard deviations uh how far how many standard deviations it's away from the mean so that's why you would be in standard form you would see that these are the centers yeah for cluster one two and three and it also tells you you know for if i did a random start one my sum of squared distances yeah is 45 and it did random start two and it got it much better 24. So it keeps doing each of these, and then it also labels one of them, which is the best one uh, here. And so that's what it uses to pick to run your algorithm. So it uses this as the center and then runs that algorithm using that random start. And finally arrives at an even better cluster center, and that's what this is displayed here. Yeah. So if you change this random number of random starts, you will see the output and clusters here. It also tells you something really interesting here. It tells you how many iterations it took to converge, meaning it had to first uh, create the center, assign is one iteration, and it had to do that only four times to converge, meaning after four iterations, there was no need for rebalancing, re reassignment, because assignments wouldn't change. So that's an important observation there. This, this, this table here tells you the inter-cluster, between cluster distances, so that's super important. Cluster one to cluster two, the distance is 2.78. Cluster 1 to 2, cluster 3 is 1.52, and this is mirror image. So you can clearly see that, you know, you want your intra-cluster, which is within cluster distance, to be uh, as small as possible. You can measure the sum of squared distances or inertia within that uh, cluster. And inter-cluster, you want it to be as far apart as possible, meaning these clusters are too different, dif different uh, in that sense, yeah? So you can look at inter-cluster distances, if you want to look at, uh, um, you know, what's happening within my clusters, then you can look at the uh, each of the cluster summaries here, which tells you, hey, cluster one has 12 data points in it, um, cluster two has eight, cluster three has 10, and then total is 30. And you also see the average distance, sum of squared distances uh, for each of these clusters. Um, there are a lot of other metrics here. The key other one that I want to focus your attention is it tells you also the assignment. 
meaning record one is assigned to cluster three. Why? Because look at the distance to cluster three from record one is the lowest in cluster three, so it's assigning to cluster three. Record two is assigned to one because from record two, the distance uh, to cluster one center is the lowest, 0.9, compared to cluster two, 1.8, and 1.4. So this gives you the output. It tells you, hey, this is my assignment for every record, every 30 uh, observation I have, this is my output. So this is an important one. You can even copy this and say, hey, what is my output um, cluster assignment? You can even uh, paste here and then see that this is, uh, I'm gonna copy it from training clusters one more time, copy, paste, yeah? So this tells you what cluster this record was assigned to. This is a cluster three, cluster one, cluster three, and so on and so forth, yeah? So you can actually look at each of these records uh, that map one to one to these records here, record one, two, and so on. And so you know how to interpret and know which cluster this is assigned to, yeah? So that's about it. You are able to then, once you can do this, you can do all kinds of things, like you can do a pivot table and actually count how many are in cluster three, one, and two, and you should actually get the same result as this. Um, you should be able to change the number of uh, input parameters if you need to. In this specific example, we looked at quantitative variables, uh, and uh, there are also several uh, categorical variables. So, you know, that's uh, maybe an another video. If, if you're interested, let me know. But this gives you a quick, quick summary of uh, how to use uh, the k-means clustering algorithm using frontline uh, analytic uh, solver and data science package uh, for k-means. Similarly, we can do another algorithm, series hierarchical clustering. We can do the same thing here. That as we discussed, doesn't require you to know the number of clusters and, you know, you build a dendrogram and it'll actually, it's a different algorithm. So maybe for another video. So hopefully that is uh, clear and you're able to use the algorithm. Very, very powerful algorithm, K-means, uh, and also very easy to understand. Good luck.